Okay, easy to find the way. Yes or no? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so stabilize the position with the tape. So I will give you some medication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the anti-nauseous drug. And also some oral tablet later. So far okay? Yeah. I have a menstruation, I think it's normal. Then after that, I have a bleeding in January 17. So much bleeding. I take picture. Then I sent to my sister. She said that you need to go in the clinic. Dr. Chan checked. She said that, oh, you have positive a cancer. Then ma Dr. Chan gave me a referral to go to the, another hospital. Maybe the second opinion. I go in Chunmon Hospital and need a biopsy like that. The Chunmon Hospital called me to take my biopsy result. I took my biopsy result. Then, yeah, it's positive in cervical cancer is stage 3. I come back to my, my employer home, then I do my duties, like cleaning. I go again in Pocoy Hospital because I have a headache. Yeah, the ambulance take me from to the hospital. I go home, then again um, the, my employer took to my papers from the Pocoy Hospital. Then after an hour, she gave me a termination letter to, you, to sign. <laughs> I work in Doha, Qatar for six years. It's a good work also, but the salary is very less. In Taiwan also, I work for three years, but very bad experience. And then I apply here in Hong Kong. For two years, I finished my first employer contract. She released me because she had a financial problem. And this time again, I find uh, another employer. This one year and two months, I'm working. I'm working, this is a uh, bad experience. Because from January 2018 and uh, June 2018, he gave me a full salary. He gave me food, rice, and noodles, like vegetable like that. But the July 2018, he told me, I will allow you to work outside. I gave you $1,000, no food. It's very hard to find part-time, but he asked me, sir, do, I will help you looking for other part-time. After one month or two months, I find the job. I work there 6.30 in the morning uh, until 9.30 in the morning. I go work. My fire time around 10.15. I finish around 10.30, ah, 11.30, one hour. And then I go pick up the kid, go back home, do the house cleaning. So I do washing the clothes, I prepare the lunch. After that, 3.30, I go back to work again for one hour. After that, I go back home again to do the dinner time. And then after that, they finish the dinner. I go work again around 8.30 and finish around 10, night time, and then I go back home. So they have some dishes, I clean, I clean the kitchen place, then around 11.15 finish my work.
I came to Hong Kong to work because I have kids in the Philippines. They still studying. But I got an employer not good. She's a disabled woman. She assaulted me not once but several times. She get my phone and she want it beside her. Even at night when she sleep, the phone also beside her. Even my passport also, she take my passport. After one, another one month, two months, I stay here. She, her attitude not good, always not good. Shouting me, calling me stupid, you're stupid, you're a rubbish, your family is stupid, like that, like that. She asked me to cook for her dinner. When I cook her dinner, finish already, I go back to the kitchen because I forgot to off the main sweet. Then when I come back, she said, where you go? I go to the kitchen. Why? Because I off the main sweet. Then she got angry again and she make like that to me. Yeah, hit me. You're so very stupid, stupid like that. Then slap me here also and my head, always like that. I cry only, I cry. Yeah. I didn't answer her, I cry only. Then I, I feed here. I'm, I'm crying while I'm feeding here. <laughs> she said, sit down here. Then she slap me here also and my, my mouth. She used her feet to, to, to pull my mouth. Huh? <laughs> this is really not good. I first met Chuan at the church where I serve in Hong Kong. So I often saw her, but uh, I don't really have this close relationship with her until the incident when she was thrown out by her employer. She told me that her first two years of employment with the employer, they were okay, you know, they treated her uh, well. From that time, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. She was really isolated. You know, her employer avoided her and told her to stay in the room. When I was asked, where are you? She said, I'm here in the park. I'm not going to go out. She said, Eh, eh, paano yung pagkain mo na? Doon na daw pinapasok yung pagkain niya sa kwarto. Eh, nung mabalitaan namin, eh, pinalayas na daw po. Nang madaling araw, mga alauna yata. Alauna. Eh, sabi ko, eh, saan na pupunta yung anak ko? It's just so much. This is Juwan. This is Juwan before she was um, diagnosed. She just look, you know, uh, uh, normal, like uh, no illness. This is how she look. This is how she look like when she's back. She was awakened by her employer and she was given a termination letter. Her employer already prepared striped bags for her belongings. The employer helped using gloves, that's what she describes me. Uh, her employer using gloves to pick up her stuffs and, and, and put it in the striped bags. She asked her employer, you know, that she don't know where to go at that time. Her employer said, just go to your church. I instructed her to go straight to the police station at uh, Chim Sha Choi. I met her there, and uh, when I saw her, she told me that she doesn't only have kidney failure, but also cervical cancer stage 3. Masayahin talaga siya kahit may mga problema naman. Hindi siya mahilig magsabi ng kung, kung hanggat kaya niya. Yan lang yung kung namin sa kanya. Pag 
Tumatawag naman po siya, eh, minsan malungkot, masaya. Siguro may mga times siguro na nahihirapan din siya. Dahil mahirap na akong mawalay sa mga anak. Yun lang po, yun lang naman yung lagi niyang sinasabi yung mga anak niya. Na huwag namin pabayaan. Dahil sa, sa kanila naman po yung paghihirap niya at saka yung pagpupursigin niya punta ng abro. Yun po. Mabait po. Pagiging mabait ka na pa. Mapagmahal po. Masipag po siya. Masayain. Pagiging masayain po. Kahit po na, kahit po hirap na hirap na po siya. Humingiti pa din po. Mabait po siya. Mapagmahal po siya. Pinibigay niya po lahat ng gusto namin kahit po nahirapan na po siya. Masakit lang po kasi po na wala na po siya. Ang una po niyang sinabi sa akin, yung mga anak niya po, hindi, huwag ko daw po silang kamabayaan. Yun po yung una. Tsaka yung mga magulang po namin. Kasi gusto niya pong mapabuti yung mga kalagayan ng mga anak niya. Dahil wala, wala naman po siyang kasamang magpalaki. Kaya yun po yung bilin niya lagi sa atin. Kahit pag tumatawag siya, yung, yung mga anak niya lagi ang sinasabi niya. Naalagaan ko daw sila. Yan po. Kaya masakit po para sa amin. Uh, ganun yung nangyari sa kanya. I phoned the employer using her cell phone and asked why they terminated her given the condition that she has at midnight. You know, while they can wait until morning so she can seek help or somebody could really help her. And it is really heartbreaking a situation when you look at a mother on the street of Hong Kong, you know, given that condition, helpless. The pain, you know, when I look at her struggling to walk and carry the bags. It's unique in Hong Kong in that uh, domestic workers are obliged to actually live with their employers. So she simultaneously lost her job and her accommodation. Her legal recourse was to initially file a complaint to the Labour Tribunal, but we thought it appropriate that this were, there was a complaint under the uh, Disability Discrimination Ordinance. The ordinance covers this sort of scenario where she was treated differently because of um, the illness that, that she had. The majority of domestic workers who face simple labour tri tribunal cases, the, the, the main problem they have is this 14-day rule, uh, whereby they get 14 days to remain in Hong Kong to deal with their matters. Now, they can get extensions from that if they file proceedings and they can remain in Hong Kong, but they can't work. These women are incurring debts to be able to remain here, to be able to get access to justice. Well, that's not effective access to justice. We go in the labor department at Chunungan. No, I cannot feel nervous. I want to face to face. She's actually excited.
When baby Jane first came to my house, um, you know, she told her sister, you know, I just want to go home and die. The employer tried to force her to sign a letter when they, when they gave her the termination notice that said that reason for termination, cervical cancer. They offered her effectively 10,000 Hong Kong to, to settle and release them from all future liability. Her contract was terminated wrongfully. Um, you know, we asked for wages for the rest of that contract. Um, as a domestic helper, that's not a lot of money. She had no full days off and the entire time she worked for them, they owe her a daily rate for each of those days. They have to reimburse her for the various medical expenses that she and her sister and I paid out of pocket um, while she was still legally employed by them. So the, you know, the basic numbers can, can be added up fairly quickly. She is not asking for anything that is unreasonable. It's unlikely there's a settlement today. I think we will have to go to tribunal. And I think the employer needs to be forced to, to explain themselves. If you don't want to assume the risk of having a helper who gets cervical cancer, a helper who gets pregnant, a helper who has a disability, don't hire someone, right? You are assuming obligations under the law. The law is very clear. And even in their conversations with media where they've said, yes, we terminated her for cervical cancer, that also shows that they as an employer and potentially other employers are not aware of their obligations under the law. There's a whole process to, to make these claims, to file, to then go to immigration and extend your visa compared to many other places that domestic workers go. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong has some very good laws on the books, but it has been incredibly difficult for her to access those, those laws. emotional feeling that you feel pity on yourself oh, yeah no. so mm -hmm. this will become a stress to you yeah, every yeah. day in Hong Kong, we are very much rely on the migrant domestic workers. Now we already almost 390,000 migrant domestic workers come to Hong Kong to work. And for my daily work, I approach different workers, go to the street and meet the migrant domestic workers, try to know them and then understand their problems. So if they have any problems, then we will uh, ask them to join the trade unions and ask our union sisters to try to help them and, and tell them what is their rights. Usually the workers, what they are asking for, they are asking for their wages, their unpaid wages, their air tickets. These are all entitled in, in the law, in their contracts. But they need to pay a lot of efforts to, to, to just taking back what they should have. So some of the workers just stuck in Hong Kong to get back the few thousand dollars which they should already have a few months ago. Baby Jane was terminated because of she was diagnosed with cancer. She was terminated while she is in sick leave. She has some unpaid wages 
and sick leave uh, wages and also the medical expenses. So she uh, decided to proceed the case in the labor tribunal. So our uh, union officers can represent her and go together with her to go through the process in the hearing. Baby Jane's case also showed that the health assess for the migrant domestic work is not enough. When the migrant domestic workers is being is employed, she is covered by the medical protections. But once she is terminated like Baby Jane, so she is not covered by the medical services in Hong Kong. And she haven't got any salary, so she's so scared. That's what we always heard. Yeah, I think we can start moving. Yeah. Do you think the employer will come today? Uh, I don't think so. Seems like uh, BB Chain was strong enough to file a case against the employer. And this makes me happy in one other side. Yeah. Because even though she is sick, and going through all these kind of problems, still she got the guts to, to fight. Some employers will be more aware after Baby Jane's case. They are already aware. After yeah. the Baby Jane's case come out, there's a lot of media coverage on, his, on, her, on her case. Because the employer also scared somehow. Or oh, they are aware. They need to they actually cannot fire some people if they are on sick leave. So I think the family of Bibi Jane is also here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are all here. They are all here. Yeah, the children. The five. Maybe the five ones? I'm not sure is it the five, it's but two. most. Yeah. I think it's two. Yeah, last time they said it's they all said the children. It's all. And I'm not sure maybe some family members also come. Oh. Yeah, so she had a lot of supporters today. Hello, Jessica. Hello. Hi. Hi. Just good, morning. Good, morning. good morning. Thank you for coming. Good morning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming to the press conference and also the hearing in this early morning. And uh, this is baby Jane, and also her family is also here together with her. And as I think all of you already know that about her case, and she is being terminated in this last February after she diagnosed having the uh, cancer stage three. And until now, Baby Jane still didn't receive any sa the salaries, the sick leave allowance, and also the medical expenses during her the, the period, uh, the employment period. We think that uh, the Baby Jane scheme is very important, it's very significant, and because there's a lot of in our trade union, we heard a lot of stories about the uh, workers who are being injured, who are sick, that is uh, because of this, they, they are being terminated. So that's why the Baby Jane set up uh, coming through the uh, justice uh, process to go to the labor tribunal, actually to give a lot of hope, to encourage the workers to stand up to fight for justice. Stop discrimination. Stop discrimination. Stop discrimination. Stop discrimination. In solidarity with Baby Jane. 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 Stop discrimination. Stop discrimination. We go first. Uh, I have. I have. Yeah, we're coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can go. I still remember the first time when I go with one worker to step in the uh, labor department. She feels so afraid even to enter and to talk with the, the, the officers directly because she don't know what to do and she don't know how to answer because you have all the responsibility to show the evidence. So the, the workers, the, the employer can say, no, I, I terminate you because of your poor performance. It's not about that. It's because of your behavior, because I don't like you. So you need to go through all these arguments, give all the evidence and cross examinations and you don't know at the end of the, the day you win or lose. I think domestic workers are also rightly afraid of what the repercussions would be if they brought uh, a case to court. The employers are far more powerful than they are. You know, the possibility to, to retaliate um, through various means. The problem is that 
if domestic workers don't come forward, then we have a hard time proving that the violations are continuing to exist. Um, because if they don't go to court, there's no real record of, of the complaints happening. I go to the um, labor tribunal, but the case the the case adjourned because they said uh, we, uh, we need to wait uh, the police investigation to finish it. But until now, it's under investigation. I don't know when. Every time I call the police, uh, they said it's still uh, it's still under investigation. I only renew my visa to immigration every month. Every time I go to immigration, I need to call the police first to send the police memo to immigration. When the, when I go immigration, the police the immigration will tell me, where is the the police? Not yet give the police memo. Not yet send here. Can you come back uh, next week again? They will give me a paper to to go back there in immigration again. Very difficult. <laughs> In terms of time, it's really not on the side of the domestic helpers in a sense that every day means one less day to provide for their families. It's like uh, one less food on the table, one less allowance for their kids. Many of the women would decide to just let it go. They don't want the hassle of it all because they say, I have to go through so many, so many channels and it would mean spending money, spending a lot of time, and I don't have that.
Ate Beverly came to the shelter before I did, and I got to know uh, her case through the, our sharing. Uh, she, uh, she told us, the, the group, that she was assaulted by her employer. I was actually surprised that she, was, she has been here for such a long time. I didn't know that the uh, police investigation would take that long or this should take that long. We don't have any word from the police and whenever we call or whenever she calls, the police just tell us that she's it's still under investigation. When the investigation is done, she can proceed to her labor case and get her claims and then move on with her life. Matibay na kuta para sa aking kaligtasan. Verse 3, Ikaw ang aking kanlungan at sanggalang. Ayon sa pangako mo, akayin ako patnubayan. Verse 4, Ligtas mo ko sa... My visa expired on um, May 15, 2019. If I go to the another step, so need to extend the visa again. And then I don't have work. I claim about 24,000. Uh, this uh, 24,000 Hong Kong dollar is a uh, salary from February, 3,410 and my put allowance from July to to my effort. Um, oh, I don't know how much <laughs> this. Uh, my salary in March and the plane ticket and uh, one month notice lay, lay. This all is I want to go back to Philippines. Mm, so that's why, sir, when maybe two months after two months, I will back here in Hong Kong to arrange the paper. When I go back to Philippines, they arrange the paper, the agency again, and then I come back here in Hong Kong to work again. For the local workers, it may be no harm for them to wait for a few months, but for the migrant domestic workers, actually, it's very difficult. The government should make the whole process go faster. Technically, it's possible. I think it's to let them to finish their case in a short manner, as soon as possible, so that they can finish the case and then to go back to their home, home countries. It's not a big policy change, but I think this is, it brings a big difference to the migrant domestic workers. They already put a high cost by staying in Hong Kong without any work, and then they need to afford the high expenses uh, living costs here, and I think this is totally unfair. Even you, they are supported by the shelter, even though they have, they don't need to pay any rent, let's say in this kind of cases. They still need to like extend their visa 
and then they still need to like buying food and all the transportations and you, you need to prepare the documents, all the photocopies. I do have the cases come to me and say, I cannot because my wallet just sold me. I don't have any money. So you see an empty wallet in front of me and then telling me that I cannot proceed. I even don't have the money to, to extend my visa. So how can I stay in Hong Kong to continue the case? The case is settled now, but he only gave me the that minimum I I expect that I asked before twenty four thousand Hong Kong dollar, but he gave me only three thousand Hong Kong dollar. I accept. I don't want to waste my time also here, because if I go to the tribunal another months or how many months I'm waiting. So that's why I accept to give to me the three thousand. It's okay. Money it's okay. I find the money. That's why I don't want to waste my time here. Because my family is need to me also. It's not fair but I accept. It's my decision. I'm alone to support my family. Mabait po siya na anak. Ay, alam niya mas maganda yung, yung sahod doon. Alos araw-araw, gabi-gabi, nagme-message yan sa mga anak sa amin. Ano naman, inaano niya yung mga anak niya. Inaalala niya. Kaya tuloy-tuloy ang pagtrabaho niya. Hanggang sa... Nagka 
sakit. Gusto ko pong mag-think about this mag- Sasabihin ko po na mahal na mahal ko po siya kasi po di ko po nasabi sa kanya dito. Nung nandito pa po siya kasi po naiya po ako. Hello, Chappy, you cannot hear. Hello. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, Miss, Mr. Wong, yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the exact address. Here in my. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I. I, I sent you a message. When I arrive in the hospital, I, I send you a message, okay? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. I feel lost because I signed this termination letter. I don't have access to do my treatment here in Hong Kong. You know, if you, your employer cut your visa and your contract, yes. you cannot access all the treatment. Any treatment is so expensive. I don't know what she's thinking, why she, why she, why she do this to me. You know, the, the doctor said you have a 50-50 chance to survive. You know what feeling? that Only little hope that you can survive this kind of illness. But Yeah. Is there anything you have questions about? Okay, okay. We'll be back. Okay, Every time they come in, they're going to want to see it because they want to make sure they, they, they're talking to the right patient. So they're going to come in and check your voice later on. Then, um, did you have admit to the other hospital in uh, over sea? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you uh, admit in the public hospital in Hong Kong? Yeah, I'm. Mean, yeah, past but it was back in so past, January yeah. and February, yeah. so probably oh, not last. Oh, last three months, not with She's you. not admission. She's mm -hmm. been getting chemo and radio at outpatient oh, at just, Adventist. Okay, so not yeah. okay, no problem.
And do you have a diarrhea on the four, a past 48 hours? No, no, no. Okay. Thank you. And then this to sign here. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi. 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 Please. I need to bite in this kind of way. All doctors say that for a of a bone is a little bit to survive. I pray that I will. Baby Jane to help you make some pudding popsicles? Yeah. Okay, we gotta go in the kitchen though. We're gonna make popsicles. Yeah. Popsicles. Yeah. Hey, more! Yeah, yeah, we're gonna make some more. We're gonna make chocolate popsicles. Chocolate! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try not to make a big mess, sweetie. <laughs> Oh, 
Here in Hong Kong, if your employer cuts your visa and your contact, you are useless. You cannot do by your own this. You, you, des you decided to quit if you have illness like, like me. You know, if you don't know the law about, uh, about here in Hong Kong, the helper about, and the employer, you better ask. Yeah. You better ask first before you decide that. This is a very basic issue. She works here, she contributes to these places, to these societies, and also the government here have the responsibility to take care of them. Human is not like a staff, and when they are sick, you just kick them out and then say, oh, this is not my responsibility. This is too cruel, isn't it? There is an imbalance in how they are seen as workers. To say they're not really seen as human beings who have the same rights as their employers. They're really seen below their employers. They don't see us as, as people working with them and working for them to help their households. They see us like a possession. I'm thinking Hong Kong is a big country, high salary. People are very, very busy. Yeah, you have high salary, but some workers, uh, they work like slaves. When I came to Hong Kong, I realized that uh, not all, not all people are good. <laughs> Domestic work is underappreciated because it's essentially what women have been doing in the home, unpaid uh, since the dawn of time. Domestic workers provide care for families to enable them to go to work. They take care of the children, of the elderly, of some of the more vulnerable people in the family. And so in that sense, they're really essential to our daily lives. But the fact that we don't really recognize that as a society um, is really at the root of some of the injustices that we're also seeing. These problems still persist, and it's, it's one that relates to, you know, the general attitude that a lot of people, including the police, and unfortunately including some judicial officers, have towards domestic workers. Domestic workers are, and so are, a necessary nuisance, who, who don't deserve to be treated the same as anybody else. Cancer is not easy, but when you surrender, you are useless. The most important is I fight for my rights and I fight also for my treatment.